Peter, thanks so much for joining us on Journal Club. It's great to have you here. Pleasure. Now, you picked a study on uh, one of your pet topics at the moment, which is low-carb um, diet, but this one is a study about um, the impact of a low-carbohydrate diet on um, people with pain from the osteoarthritis. Is that right? Yep. I guess that's mixing my two interests. One is the musculoskeletal side of things and, and the other is the, is the dietary side. And, um, and there's a lot of infl- uh, interest now, I think, uh, starting to um, develop in, in this relationship between diet and uh, pain and, uh, and inflammation. And so this paper by Strath um, looked at uh, an older age group, 65 to 75 uh, people with knee osteoarthritis, and uh, put them on a uh, three different streams, three different diets. One was a low-carb diet, um, one was a low-fat diet, and one was just a normal continue as is. Uh, as I said, small, only a total of 20 people all up, so it's a pilot study. Um, and, uh, and the results were, were pretty impressive in that the, uh, the, as far as knee pain and knee function went, the low-carb group uh, improved significantly. Uh, compared to the low fat group and the uh, and the um, the normal normal diet, um, which is interesting um, because uh, there's always been an emphasis on on weight loss and and knee osteoarthritis. You know, standard sort of uh, suggestion from you know, surgeons and so on uh, is you know well, just lose some weight; it'll reduce the mechanical impact on the on the knee. Um, but interestingly, this group did well, but didn't lose weight. So uh, it suggests that maybe there's something else going on. And I've always thought, well, thought for some time that it probably wasn't so much the weight loss, it was more the reduction in inflammation. And I think that's a really interesting area, the role of well, diet and exercise and stress and all sorts of different things in inflammation. Because we know now that <coughs> chronic inflammation, chronic low-grade inflammation, is, is probably the underlying factor in most chronic disease. And uh, if we can reduce inflammation in various ways, then you know, so much the better. So is it actually the... like? Fat tissue, the the adipose tissue that's in the body that creates inflammation, and, and by reducing potentially the amount of fat that you have in your body, that it's m- reducing the mechanical load, but also actually reducing the amount of inflammation that the body's kind of developing as well. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, something that I, I didn't understand until relatively recently is that adipose cells, adipocytes, actually secrete inflammatory cytokines. So there's two elements to it. So you've got a diet which is probably uh, high in processed foods that that is inflammatory in nature, so you've got that component, and then that same diet is causing increased adiposity and the production of growth of adipocytes, which then also are inflammatory and and secrete cytokines. So you've got this double whammy effect of a poor diet uh, leading to inflammation. And um, There's a lot of controversy as to what foods are inflammatory and uh, and what not, but I mean, I, I look at it very simply and say that, you know, Unprocessed uh, real foods are, are probably not particularly inflammatory, um, uh, but processed foods are, are inflammatory. So it's things like sugar, processed carbohydrates, the vegetable oils, the seed oils that you know, most sort of uh, processed foods are, are cooked with. Um, they're the things that are inflammatory. Um, other, there's controversy, and I think there's a bit of individual variation in it. I think some people, for some people, um, dairy might be inflammatory, but for the, the majority are, are not. Um, so there's a few you know, sort of individual things, but by and large, uh, what we call an anti-inflammatory diet is generally a, a low-carb diet, um, but it's a, it's a no-processed food diet, a reduction in processed food. That really seems to be the key to uh, reducing inflammation. Now, this was a pilot study that was done a few years ago, um, but you're part of a group at La Trobe University, and yep. you're looking to actually scale something similar up um, in the near future, is that right? Yeah, that's right. We've in fact just uh, appointed a PhD student to uh, help undertake this uh, study, which will be a much larger study, be a full-scale RCT. Uh, we're looking at about 140 people in the uh, in the study, and uh, divided into two groups. One will be a uh, what we call an anti-inflammatory diet, which is as I just described, is basically you know removing processed foods and, and sticking to a sort of a, a real food diet. Compared to um, a standard, you know, what we call a standard Australian uh, diet, um, and um, that'll be a twelve-week study, the same as uh, the, the Strath's uh, study that we we're looking at was, 
and uh, where we'll be measuring um, a whole range of different uh, factors. We'll be doing body composition, we'll be doing bloods for uh, inflammatory biomarkers and, and so on. And then we'll be doing knee, knee pain and knee function, you know, the two scale that you'll be no doubt familiar with and so on. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a big study. Um, and we're pretty excited about it. We've got some funding for it and uh, we're starting up in the new year. So it's, uh, we'll hopefully be able to sit here in a, in a year or so and, uh, and tell you the results. Oh, that sounds really exciting. I think one of the most interesting things about this paper for me was that they actually had the three groups, you know, like so many papers, or not so many, but there's a number of papers that looked at low-carb versus normal diet. Yep. But this one actually looked at low-fat as well, which, you know, I know you've it's been a pet topic or hate of yours for a long time that, um, that low-fat has been something that's been advocated for so long, particularly with people, you know, who have got arthritis and joint pain. Whereas this paper seemed to suggest that there's just nothing that benefited anyone, like with just reducing fat. What's your take on that? Yeah, look, I, I think that's right. I mean, I think there's more and more uh, evidence coming out now that we've basically got it wrong. You know, that that, uh, that, that promoting this low fat diet, that, that you know, the anti cholesterol, anti saturated fat, and and there's really no evidence that uh, that cholesterol or saturated fat in your diet is is detrimental to you. And um, you know, that fat's been demonised, um, and uh, really, it's it's sugar and, and processed carbohydrates that uh, that should have been demonised. And uh, you know, it's interesting. Ever since we went on, you know, the whole world went low fat you know, forty years ago. We've just got fatter and sicker ever since. And so, uh, you know, when you when you keep uh, someone keeps you know producing bad results, you sort of uh, you got to at some stage say, well, hang on a minute, you know, <laughs> we're doing something wrong here. So, um, yeah, I think there's more uh, more. Really convincing evidence now. I think that it's uh, in particular it's it's um, you know, sugar and, and processed carbohydrates that are, that are the problem in our, in our diet. And the, and the sooner we uh, we reduce that and and get back to the healthy fats and healthy protein and uh, as, as the basis of our diet, then we'll be much better off. Both um, the study that we have read and the one that you're going to do next year had the diet intervention for twelve weeks. Yep. Um, it's a reasonable time frame because you've got to package it up for research, don't you? But yeah. I suppose the thing that I thought of when I read the paper was is that how sustainable, you know, 12 weeks is great, but then how many people can do it for 12 weeks but no longer? Mm. Like, can people sustain a, a low-carb diet um, for a long period of time? Yeah, I think uh, the, the trouble with diets, as you inferred quite correctly, is that it's very hard to stick to them. Uh, that's because most diets are low-calorie diets. So if you go on an 800-calorie-a-day diet, I mean, you can't stick to it. I mean, you get hangry, hungry and angry. It's just impossible. It's just a matter of time till you, till you, uh, you know, break. Um, the, the advantage of a, of a low carb sort of healthy fat and protein sort of diet is that you don't get hungry. So basically, it's carbohydrates that make you hungry. And fats and proteins fill you up. So if you remove that sort of hunger thing, uh, it makes it much easier to stick to a, to a diet. Um, I'm coming up for ten years now on, on a low carb diet. I don't have any problems uh, sticking to it. I eat really well, enjoy my food, and um, I just don't eat a lot of processed and, and junk food. I mean, I don't eat any, in fact. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, I haven't found it that difficult, to be honest. Um, but some people might. So the, 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 I suppose the, uh, the theory uh, behind these low-carb diets is that it helps reduce and dampen down the inflammatory response for pain. So this, is, this was a study that was done for knee osteoarthritis, but can you extrapolate, you know, this study and others um, for all inflammatory pain? So if you get inflammatory pain, whether it's bowel issues or other joint pain or whatever, is will a low carb diet help that? Yeah, absolutely. If you reduce inflammation, it doesn't matter whether it's knee osteoarthritis or one of the, uh, um, the, the rheumatoid or one of the other types of arthritis which are very inflammatory or uh, inflammatory bowel disease. I mean, they now believe that. Uh, Coronary artery disease or arteriosclerosis, atherosclerosis is a is an inflammatory. Uh, that it's basically the inflammation that causes the damage, and the cholesterol sort of gathers around the inflammation. It's not the cholesterol per se. Um, and there's uh, there's evidence that um, even um, anxiety and depression may be related to inflammation. There's some really exciting work being done at uh, at Deakin University through um, through them, and and you know they suggest that. Uh, Inflammation is, is a factor there. So it's, yeah, it, the more we, we're learning, the more this, and it's not so much the acute florid inflammation that we see in the red hot swollen joint sort of thing. 
it's it's more the chronic low grade inflammation that damages uh, um, blood vessels in particular and joint lining and and so on and it's uh, and it's provoked by a whole range of uh, of things. It's not just diet. It, it's lack of exercise. It's stress. It's smoking. It's alcohol. Probably lack of sun. Um, all these uh, factors can contribute to to inflammation. But I think diet is probably the number one factor. And uh, I, I've had you know can give you a ton of stories of dramatic responses to um, to a low carb diet for people with florid inflammatory uh, disease. You know, I had a test cricketer who uh, had basically had to stop playing uh, because he had a, um, a type of rheumatoid arthritis, had a seronegative arthritis, and, uh, and was on some very powerful drugs and changed his diet to low carb and was able to completely uh, get rid of his, uh, his knee pain and um, throw away his drugs, which were costing the taxpayer $15,000 a year, these heavy sort of autoimmune type uh, drugs. And uh, that's the... That was the case that really opened my eyes to this. I, I couldn't believe it, to be honest. And uh, since then, you know, it really should be the first port of call. You know, instead of sort of immediately reaching for the prescription pad if you've got arthritis or, or, or booking in for, you know, your total knee replacement or something like that, the first things you should do are diet and exercise. You know, they're the two key factors. We know that exercise is, uh, is good. There's the GLAD program and, and various other programs that have been shown to be effective. But diet is the other thing that, uh, that is the missing link, I think, at the moment, that people uh, get onto an anti-inflammatory type diet, which is basically a low-carb, no-processed food diet, and you'll notice a dramatic improvement. Peter Bruckner, thank you very much for joining us on the, the Journal Club this week. My pleasure.